amino group number 2 hydrogen atom number 3 carboxyl and the fourth group which we are calling the side chain is what makes them different now what about the other two exceptions the other two exceptions the first one is glycine the second one is proline how do they differ from the 18 amino acids for glycine it quite all right has this structure which is similar to the general structure of amino acids you can see amino group that's the amino there hydrogen atom that's the hydrogen atom carboxyl that's the carboxyl there but how does this glycine differ from the other 18 amino acids it differs from the others because in the other group it contains h because it has h in the other group it means that the four things attached to carbon at the center they are not different you can see that this hydrogen is similar to that hydrogen so this carbon is not alpha carbon so it doesn't have an alpha carbon quite right it has carboxyl hydrogen and amino group but the carbon at the center is not alpha because there are two hydrogen atoms that's the difference what about proline for proline what makes it different is the fact that it it has quite a right h attached to the carboxyl but it forms it joins to form a ring structure like that now you can see that the moment it forms a ring structure it looks very different in the sense that it's not made up of a, a common structure of carbon at the center with four different things attached separately it forms a ring and its amino group is not even called amino it's actually amino and some books refer this to as amino acid in the notes if you check i have explained further why it is referred to as an amino acid and what makes it different from the other amino acids so what will happen right now is i'm going to give you some of the names of amino acids because you need to know them for now structure is not very important i don't want you to focus very much on knowing the structures of all the 20 amino acids but understand the general structure because we shall use this general structure to make a protein as i use the other side of the board let me give you a list of amino acids that are there the names i'm going to use here the names of the amino acids i'll use they are no they were normally given based on the nature of the amino acid or maybe the source where it was first isolated that's where the names comes from so the amino acids these names you are seeing here proline glycine these were given sometimes based on the nature of that amino acid the characteristics or features then number 2 based on the source where it was first isolated let me give an example we have one amino acid called glycine which would be this would be our number one. it is called glycine because it comes from greek glycos and glycos simply means sweet because it has a sweet taste so because of its sweet taste it's got glycine that's its nature We have an amino acid called asparagine because it was first isolated from a fungi asparagus it was isolated from asparagus species that's why we call it asparagine there is another one called tyrosine because it was first isolated from 
Tyros. Tyros is the Greek for cheese because its first isolation was from cheese. So this is how we name amino acids. Sometimes in, in medicine, we try to abbreviate the amino acids by using just the first three letters. So instead of you writing glycine, we just abbreviate as G-L-Y, aspartate, A-S-P. That's how we write them. So for me to help you with examples of amino acid, I'm going to include other amino acids that are used in the human body to make proteins. We have talked about glycine, asparagine, tyrosine. We can talk about aspartate. We can talk about glutamine, glutamate, histidine, methionine, threonine, valine, isoleucine, leucine, phenylalanine, alanine, valine, cysteine, proline. As you study, ensure that you give the other three examples. So I've given you 17 examples of amino acids. You should go to the notes so that you check the other three amino acids. What have we done so far? We have looked at a protein, stated the functions of proteins. We have stated the building blocks of proteins, which we call amino acids. We have stated some functions of these amino acids and examples of the amino acids. My next step is now to explain to you how we use the amino acids in the synthesis of proteins. How do we get amino acids? Link them in order to synthesize a long chain, to make a long chain structure, a polymer of amino acids. And another question is, what type of bonds? What bonds do we find in a protein? So my subtitle is synthesis of a protein. How do we make proteins from amino acids? So in the introduction, I explained to you that a sequence, a sequence of amino acids makes up a protein. That was the introduction. What it simply means is this. You are going to have an amino acid like this. Remember, we said that an amino acid contains amino group, which is on your left side. And when, it, when the amino group is on your left side, and the carboxyl group is on your right side, we call this type of amino acid L amino acid. And I should state something very important right now. In the human body, the types of amino acids we use to make proteins are L amino acids, meaning the amino group is in, on your left, while the carboxyl group is on your right. It doesn't mean D, the other type which is D, amino acids are not useful. They are also used in other parts of the body. For example, the brain tissue has been known to contain some amino acids like glutamate. But our focus is the L amino acid. So I am drawing amino acid number one because it's the first one. And we said that the other group makes amino acids different from each other. I'm going to write this other group as R1. After that, 
I will draw another amino acid next to this one. So it's going to have also amino group, carbon at the center, hydrogen atom, carboxyl group, and because this is a different amino acid, I'll write it as R2. Maybe for the sake of argument, let me include another amino acid so that we have three. Because it's different, I'll write it R3. So what you are seeing on the board here is a situation where you have one amino acid with a different R group, another amino acid with a different R group, and another one with a different R group. When they are about to react in order to form a protein, the first amino acid donates OH and gets H from the next one. And when you combine OH with H, what you make is what we call H2O. The water that we talked about in the introduction. So water is liberated. Same thing will happen here. This amino acid will act as the first. This one as second. It will donate OH and get H. What happens? Water is liberated. The process continues over and over. So you can link 100, 200, 1000 amino acids together. And when you are linking them, there is something you should remember. As you make a long structure, the beginning 